الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله ولا صح ولا جنين ولا بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون Sadaq Allahu Ladeen. Indeed, the praise is for Allah. Therefore, we praise Him. We seek His aid, His assistance, His help exclusively. We seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil which, which uh, emanates from within and the harm thereof. I give open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship of Allah. Highly glorified is He. He has no partner in the dominion of His creation. I give further testimony to Muhammad, to whom the Quran will reveal peace and prayers upon him, as his servant messenger. Peace be on him, his family, his companions, and all those who gather in righteousness. What follows that? What follows that after? Amin. All you who believe, have taqwa for Allah, as it is his right to receive taqwa, and die not except, except as Muslim. Surely Allah is. Assalamu alaikum. Beloved Muslims, we are, are always in a celebratory mood and Allah allows us to gather for this blessed moment of Juma, Salat to Juma. We are always in a mind to express our gratitude for the blessings that Allah has given us, not just in our presence here, but in that we had the inclination to respond to the call. that it was within us, that we were not of those who have the, that, that, uh, that hutum, right? That seal, that barrier that is placed over the hearts of those who are found to be in rejection, those who are found to be in disbelief. So we thank Allah for sensitizing us, for opening our hearts and allowing us to be responsive and not just for us to be here, but to, for Allah to understand that our presence here is, a, is an affirmation of Allah's favor upon us, that he allowed for our intention To come, to come to fruition. So we are nothing but uh, celebratory about this. So in today's Qutbah, we want to examine a couple of intersecting uh, points. Uh, I believe last week, Imam Zaki, he, he spoke about uh, uh, warfare. He gave a really beautiful example on, uh, on, how, on how Allah and the, uh, the, the guidance of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that it gave us clarity on how we are to engage in war, right? Allah gives us clarity within the Quran and then in the living example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we were able to see what it actually looks like, right? And the idea is that we don't want to follow in the footsteps of those who don't understand what is lawful and, and what is Quran, right? What is prohibited. So with that, I was thinking about, uh, I was reading an ayat, and this phrase came to mind, which was related to this. Uh, and we see this multiple times where Allah reminds the believer, reminds the believer to not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Right? He reminds us in multiple spaces throughout, uh, throughout the front. But you always see it. Yeah, you are the amen. Right? All you who believe. Do not follow the footsteps of shaitan, right? Uh, says, whoever follows the footsteps of shaitan, says they will be commanded, then they are commanded towards what is immoral, uh, what, is, uh, what is unseemly, right? What is sinful, right? What is debased. Right, so there's a, a, a clear formula, right? There's a logical expression of what happens, not just the commandment, but what happens when you don't pay attention to that. So this idea of following the footsteps of shaitan and how it's connected to, for us, realizing that there's an individual celebration that each of us are party to right now, and the fact that we were able, we are able to be here, for the Salatul Allah allowed us to wake up today, right? 
on Yomo Juma, right, to be here, right? There's an individual victory in that. And of course, we come together. And so we are celebrating collectively. So this idea, I'm connecting this, this idea of, the, of not losing sight of the place of the individual celebration in terms of the collective. And what, what comes to mind is the, uh, one of the accounts of Musa Islam, he is told, he's called to come up the, come up the mountain, right? He is establishing his prophethood. He has the children, and Israel, the children of Israel with him. And he is told to come summon up the mountain. He runs at speed. He leaves uh, Harun, Salam, and you're in charge and he runs off. And he is met with a question from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Says, why did you, why did you run off? Why did, why did you leave? Why did you leave the people? Why did you leave your people? Says, I wanted to please you. I wanted to, I wanted to, to get here with speed. Right? I don't want any delays. And you can kind of infer, think about this here. Says, these people have slowed me down. Right? The people were not moving at the same pace that I was moving. The people are moving and, and maybe they're getting distracted by, by the scenery. Maybe the people want to have conversations or maybe there's an argument that is happening. Or, you know, as, 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 as people move, whenever you got a group of folks together, the dynamics, things change. It's not like being alone. Right? There's a different, there's a different ex expectation of something that you ask of an individual and something that you ask of a group of people. So as Musa, alayhi salam, as he is in this position, he's in a position of leadership. And he is also in a position that he wants to please his Lord. He wants to be responsive. Allah says, come, I'm coming. Allah says, do this, I'm going to do it. But it doesn't end there. The individual celebration of the individual submission is not, is not actually the, the true goal. It's not just about the individual. The true goal is about the collective is about the community. It says you've left, you've left your people. Why did you leave your people? I'm trying to, just trying to do what you asked me to do. Well, understand, you've been commissioned. You've been given a position of leadership. You've been given a position of trust. And that means that you have to see beyond what is just uh, expeditious, just what is beneficial for you as an individual in that moment. And understand when you are asked to do something, you are asked actually to do it, not just for yourself, you're asked to do it, on behalf of those you lead. Now, what we should, should uh, uh, take to mind is when Allah tells us, says to save yourselves and your family from the hellfire, right? Save yourselves and your family. Because if Allah would have simply left it and save yourselves, then we would have nothing but individual celebration. We would have nothing but people who believe that as long as they're winning, everything is good. They would think that their only responsibility, it is just my responsibility, it's just for myself. God says, save yourselves and your family. Now, while none of us are given revelation, final revelation has been sent. The final messenger has been sent. But we are all in position of leadership in, in varying uh, stages and varying uh, positions and places throughout our lives. We're all in positions of leadership. We're all in positions where our presence is an actual invitation towards that meeting with Allah. Our presence is, is, is an affirmation of Allah's blessing. It's a presence. Our presence is an affirmation of Allah's guidance. But the human factor comes in. The human factor is, man, I'm not trying to lose. I'm not trying to have y'all take me down with y'all. Right? I'm out of here. I'm gone. I'm going to go win by myself. But that is not what Allah gave to us. That is not what we are the inheritors of. We're not inheritors of an individual race, of an individual struggle. We are inheritors of a collective mission, a collective struggle, a body of work that continues, that continues to be present and reassert itself. The challenge is reasserts itself throughout, not just the, the uh, generations, but throughout our lives. Throughout our lives in different circumstances, we find ourselves 
faced with faced with this task of how do I respond to a lost call? And also still be connected to those that I love. We're not talking about, remember, we're talking about yeah, those who believe, oh you who believe. Which is a very important distinction. Allah gives us clear, clear uh, uh, guidance on how we are supposed to respond to those who take our religion as mockery or sport, those who reject faith, those who are hypocrites, right? He gives us clear, clear uh, guidance on that. Those are people we're not supposed to take into account. Those are people we're not supposed to look to to stand up for us, to advocate for us. Those are not, those are not our friends, right? Those are not our friends, but the believers, the believers, we're supposed to be tenderhearted and open and empathetic and compassionate with the believers. We're supposed to have patience with the believers. And we're given this guidance and the example and the prophetic, the prophetic uh, character, the prophetic tradition. We're given this example. We look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we look at the community that he was given and how that community had to grow how that community had to mature. And we see that maturation in, even, in the, uh, even in the commandments, right? Even in the commandments, we, we went from don't come to prayer drunk, don't come to prayer, you know, with a mind be fogged, don't come to prayer inebriated, to uh, alcohol and gambling is forbidden, right? There was a progression. There was patience that had to be, that had to be exerted. I'm sure you, you think about this. As we are sensitized to a sober life, sober, sober mindedness and consciousness, there's probably nothing more irritating for, for, the, for the Muslim, for the conscious Muslim who, who appreciates and respects the ability to, to, to manage this, this gift that Allah has given us, than to be around a bunch of people that's drunk. Probably nothing more, you know. You know, you, you, you pick your adjective, whether it's infuriating or disgusting, right? It just puts you off. It takes you outside of yourself to be around, to have to be in, in environments like that. Now, just imagine, imagine if that disgust or if that, uh, uh, that, that anger, imagine if, if the prophet, peace and prayers, would have said, you know what, y'all just not worth it. Y'all just not worth it. I'm going to, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray these five. I'm going to, I'm going to perform my hajj. I'm going to give my charity, my zakat, right? I'm going to be a good Muslim and the rest of y'all can go to hell. That's not, but that's not the example that we were given. That's not the example that we were given. And when we hear that Aisha, may Allah uh, uh, be pleased with her, when she's asked about the Prophet وسلم, and she said that he was a Quran walking, we can't be so reductive to think that that just meant that he was, he was the Quran walking as an, as an example of his commandments. Right? He was a Quran walking as if you would just ask him anything and he's just going to give you what the Quran says and not see that this also was that he was a, a, a living example of what it meant to have patience and understanding and watch people be able to grow in their maturity, right? To grow from, from that small state and into, into the, the potential, the capacity that Allah has placed within them. So this is a challenge. This is a challenge for us as people, as people with families and, and, and loved ones who are in varying states of faith that we have a responsibility to not simply run off by ourselves, right? And, and I've seen this, I won't, I'm, you know, not up here to call your names out, but I've been with folks. I've been with other Muslims and people get into, you know, you just kind of moving along and, you know, you just doing what you're doing. Somebody leaves, you know, you didn't realize they're going, they come back, hey, what you been? I just, I just, I just uh, praise a lot. What? So you just left us heathens in here why you ran off by yourself to go pray, right? You, you didn't think that it was appropriate for you to invite us. No, you ran up the hill by yourself. 
You ran up the hill by yourself. There was nobody to ask you to go. Why did you run off and leave your people? Why did you run off and leave your people? This is not an individual. This is not an individual act, exercise. There's no individual acc uh, accolade uh, to be to be get, to, to be got when we are in this endeavor. This is a community endeavor. It's a family endeavor. It's a, it's about relationships, and relationships require patience. Relationships require an understanding that as a law has been patient for those who came before us, that a law was patient with us to allow us to come into whatever understanding we think we have, that we should also be patient and understanding with those around us. Because as, as I say, we are, we are living examples of a law's invitation. And when we remove ourselves and we just become about, I'm just gonna respond to what Allah has asked me to do, and I'm gonna leave you by yourself, right? Even though you are amongst those who believe, you believe like I believe, but I'm gonna, you know, I don't have time for you. Then we actually, we actually separate ourselves from what Allah has given us. Allah made it us, he, he, he brought us into existence, he gave us intelligence, and he animated us with the spirit of understanding that what he has given us is a community, a community trust. Not an individual trust, but a community trust. And that has to be managed carefully. It has to be managed um, with compassion. It has to be managed uh, intentionally. So while we believe and understand the danger Right now, uh, it is muted. You're muted. As I'm like, um, Allah that brings us to the right. So may Allah bless us and allow us to understand that the greatest fulfillment, what Allah has given us, is that, that we take such joy in proclaiming that we are Muslim is in our relationships with other Muslims, in our relationships with our, our loved ones our relationship to those who believe, right? So we pray Allah continues to guide us, allow us to respond, not just as, as individuals, but to respond collectively. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Juma, Alhamdulillah. Now, as we close, I want to uh, bring our attention to, I guess, two points. One is, is that uh, there's an ayat, this beautiful expression that uh, I think Allah, he invites us to think. He says, go into Quran and reflect. He's inviting us to think a multi, in a multiple of ways, right, that are beneficial for us, that that allow us to bring out the best in ourselves. Allah says, illa uh, uh, And what is the reward for good but good? What is the reward for good but good? It's really important for us to deepen our understanding and application of this idea of sin, right? Of what is, what is good, what is good. It is not just um, what is the reward for good actions or excellent actions or beautiful actions or words, anything, right? It is also, we're also talking about people, right? So what is the reward for good people, but good? What is the reward for excellent people, but excellent people, right? This is saying is something that is comprehensive and it's gonna have different applications depending on, on, depending on the, the, the circumstance of the conscience, right? But for us, we should be thinking about embodying and representing the best of what that is saying, right? If we want to avoid those footsteps, then we will, we're going to be doing our best to embody, to represent uh, Islam. We're going to be doing our best to represent not just 
Not just doing good, but actually being good. Because we understand that there's a difference between an action that is done and witnessed by others and the action and, and where it comes from. Right? There's a lot of things that on the surface, they look like they're good things. It's a, it's a great thing that was done, but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually knows that that came from a good person. It came from a good source. So while we strive to do good, it's more important that we be good. Right? And if we are good, we're going to be mated with good. Right? We bring on additional good. Like, you know, it's not an indictment, but if you can, you can see people who give millions and millions of dollars away, right, in philanthropy. You can see people who, who are always, uh, you know, on, on, on the screen, always got the eye on them. But they look like they're surrounded by questionable people. There's, 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 something, there's something to observe. In I want to take a, a, a quick moment. I, uh, I, I posted on this just kind of an idea. It was not necessarily related to um, all this uproar about uh, Deion Sanders and leaving. And a lot of people mad that he left from a HBCU. And, um, so it's, it's in some way, it's applicable to that, uh, what, I, what I posted. But I want to share just the, I guess, the essence of it. And that is, you cannot choose who is on your team. You can't make somebody be on your team. Does not matter how, how talented you think they are. Doesn't matter how much ability or potential, how good you think they're going to be for your cause, for your organization. That's not your choice. That's not our choice. As a matter of fact, which immediately comes to mind as a, a bassin, right? You frown, right? Prophet, uh, peace and prayers be upon him. He was trying to engage one of the, the, the notables, one of the, the high-ranking clan members, the, the tribal leaders, getting him to accept Islam because he knew because of the, the way that their society was constructed that if he got him, he got his support, then he got, he got the rest of the tribes. Right? But that wasn't to be. That wasn't to be. You can't choose who is on your team. Allah makes Muslims. Allah determines who is going to be like-minded. Allah determines who is going to see the mission and buy into the mission and give themselves to it. If you got a pitch, if you got to make a pitch for somebody to join your team, that's somebody that's not on your team. If you got to make a pitch for somebody to, to see the importance of community life, for community uh, advancement, community health, if you got to convince somebody of that, probably, you probably you know, move on to the next. Good attracts good. Like attracts like. So in this time where people are quick to try to identify and put folks in, in boxes and, and tell you who's who and who's with who, you know, we don't really have to, we don't have to really worry about that. Our main concern is going to always be recognizing those who have faith, those who are committed uh, to the work, those who are committed to this collective consciousness, the, the collective uh, advancement, that is, that, is, that is our struggle and that is what uh, we have been given. So while people will complain, and then the last thing I'll mention about that is, it's also important for us to understand that it's very dangerous, right, to rush to have an opinion and you don't have any information. It's very dangerous, right? This is where those small, small print retractions come from in the face. They print something one day and they realize they got to go back to it. You know, we got it all wrong. And there are things that are coming out now of those who are following that, interested in that, that might change, might change your opinion, right? About it's in terms of whose team, who is on. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, we are grateful. We are grateful that Allah has given us a book, a messenger, a mission that reminds us that our true worth is not just in what we have as, as an individual, but our true worth is in what we have as a community, uh, as an ummah. So may Allah bless each of us to be protectors of that community. May Allah bless each of us to be inviters towards that which is, which is good, 
which is most uh, pleasing in the sight of Allah. May Allah bless us to be compassionate with our families, our loved ones, our spouses, our friends. May Allah continue to elevate us in our remembrance and our consciousness of Allah. Thank you, Pastor.